If you were a normal viewer here, you remember a few videos back we introduced a profiling tool made by Carl Fisher up in Canada. And today we're going to make some modifications to it. We are going to make a fence for this thing today. Our chief engineer spends most of his time in his machine shop, testing his automats over and over again. Alright, first thing we need to do is take this thing down and get it ready to uh, work on. I had these uh, flat dies in here because I was using it to... Uh, Planish the edge on a uh, panel that I was making. We'll have it come off of these, and I gotta go through my scrap bin, but what I'm thinking is probably some type of round rod in some tubing and kind of make it adjustable. We'll see. And it may not even, I might just weld it to the frame. It may not even be something that picks up off of those bolts. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so we've got that pulled apart. What I need to do now is kind of just go over and look in my scrap bin and uh, see what's in there. I think that's kind of going to kind of uh, tell the tale on how we're going to make this thing is what's in the scrap bin. Let's see what this stuff is. Okay, that stuff is super hard. Um, I can use it. I'm gonna try and turn a couple passes on it, see how much effort it takes. See if I start smoking my tools. Uh, I might use that or I might keep looking for another piece. That is 738. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a plan. Let me show you. It's funny how these things work because when you start to do them, you have an idea in your head, but once you get your hands on it, it kind of develops into something different. And that's what happened here. Let me show you where we're at. So uh, let me bring you in a little tighter here. So originally I wanted to pick up these and I was thinking about just welding that right to there, but then I lose access to these bolts. And depending on the die length, this may smash and break, big problem. So what I have uh, determined to be the best solution is to use some angle, some 90 degree angle, and I'll pick up these two holes. So this is going to be a bolt on solution after all. And then uh, I'll come in behind it and I'm going to weld this pipe along this angle right here. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I've got my, my rod here, my dowel that I've turned. It's about, I don't know, 30 thousandths undersized. So there's a lot of slop in there. And that's going to be, I'm going to have one of these on each side, and that's going to be my depth. So I'll just have it run all the way to, I don't know, back in there to where I can, I can tuck it behind, that I can get the full depth if I need it without removing this. And then what I think I will do is I'll blow a hole in here on the mill probably, a nice round one that's oversized, and then weld a quarter inch nut to it, and then... Uh, make a quarter inch uh, a set knob with like knurling on it or something and that's gonna be that's how we're gonna do that and I'm still I'm the, the jury's still out how I want to attach the fence to the front part here so I got to think about that still as well but um, we're just moving from the back forward so we'll figure that out once we get to this part or once we get this part finished <laughs> Headway, here's where we are. Is that dirty? We're making some headway, here's where we are. So I've got these welded up to the outside there, you can see. And so the plan is next to get these in just the right spot. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do it or how I'm gonna hold it yet, 
but I'm going to play around with it. And then, uh, of course, we'll get the, uh, the guide rod figured out as well. So here, here's my thought. Here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I'm going to weld these here. This is going to come here. It reaches all the way out here. So I want to put the fence on the tip of this. So like this is, this right here has probably got enough purchase and then I could do a set screw in there. Um, it's kind of sloppy, isn't it? I don't know, maybe I'll shim it up. I'm not super pumped on that. But the idea is if I drill and tap here, I can use like a piece of angle and then, you know, put the fence on that way, which I think could work. I don't know. But for now, I think I'm going to drill and tap the ends of these for quarter 20. So I'm going to set up my tail stock for this. Um, for quarter 20, you want a number seven. So that is what I have here, number seven. But first, we're going to center drill this stuff. So we'll use a center drill. Chuck this back up. A lot more lathe stuff in this video than I had anticipated. But I will go this way. when you're plunge drilling like this on a lathe, it's a good idea to break the chips. So I go in and get a good bite and then break the chip off. That way it doesn't plug up the tap or the, the drill bit, excuse me. Because if you plug that, the flutes in the drill, you, you can break it off and then uh, forget about it. Like that's junk after that. Okay, now we're gonna uh, tap for quarter 20. Uh, I've got my taps over here. Okay, I'm gonna show you, I won't call it a trick, because there's gonna be people out there that abhor this idea that think it's uh, very bad. But I'm gonna show you something that works. Okay, that is a tip, or a, uh, a tap in the tailstock. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run this up, turn it off, and I'm gonna shove the tap in there with the tailstock, and it's gonna get it started straight. Okay, it's in there straight now. So we can back this off, move the tailstock, run this back, and we can tap the rest by hand. And I'll just lock the spindle like I said people are gonna hate that and you might be one of them I don't know but uh, my grandpa taught me that and he sent rocket ships to space so okay so I wasn't sure what size fence I'm gonna put on there and I want to make it so I can change it out but I don't think there's any problem with having a fence too big. So I'm going to start here. And here's what I'm thinking. So this is kind of where it's going to live. And I, I clearly, I want it to be able to come forward more. So I need to notch it out a quarter inch for it to like come forward on the die set.
Hey, I think that's gonna work. Let's try our proof of concept over here. So if we have this back here, oh, dude. I mean, it's almost like I know what's up. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Okay, and that's gonna work good. So we've got that. Oh, it just fits in there. Just perfect, guys. Look at that shit. Okay, that was an accident, but a happy one. It turned out super great. So now we gotta come in through here and we gotta figure out, actually, you know what I was thinking? That's not a fence, is it? That's just a table. <laughs> that's a fence. Like that is a fence, okay. But that is perfect and that is exactly, oh, you're not even looking. I had it I had it the other way, basically like that. That's dumb. So now, now it's a fence, right? Now we need to figure out screws for this thing and positioning on that. You see what I'm thinking here now? Are you guys picking up what I'm stepping in? So we're gonna be like this, right? And then we can just shh, shh. Yeah. Sick. Okay, if you have ever wondered an easy way to find the center of this, so I need to find the center, so, cause that's in the center, and I need a quarter 20 hole in there. So what you wanna do is, I've picked up the outside, right? So I'm gonna make about five center punches around the outside. Okay. Just random places is fine. And then what we want to do is we want to set these calipers to half of the, the distance here, the overall circumference. So I guess that would be the radius, right? Okay, so the OD here is 640 thousandths. That would be 320 would be half of that. So we'll come through here and we'll set, there's three and 320. So we'll set half of that. Come over here to your backside. And this is going to be like horseshoes and hand grenades, just pretty close. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick up those holes that we grabbed earlier and we're going to start, my camera's in the way, but we're going to start dragging little semicircles across the inside of this circle. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that, but I can. There's one. There's two, and it's important that they go through the center, there's three, four, I don't know if you can see this or not. If I had another one at the bottom, it would be perfecter. But I've got one right here. Okay, so when you do that, if you had another one over here, which I can punch one in, let's see. Let's punch one. That one might be a little bit on the inside, but you'll get it. You'll get the point. Okay, so now it kind of blocks off a little spot in the middle where nothing has hit it. I don't even know if you guys can see that, but um, that's going to be your center right there. So we'll just take our center punch. And now we've got the center. See if I can't get a better 
But there's some paint on this, so that might be hard to understand as well. But basically, you scribed semicircles around this thing, and it left the center of it open. The more you do, the more precise you can get. But for something like that, that is probably more than enough. So now we'll just blow a quarter inch hole in. Okay, here's where we're at. I've got this C clamped up to uh, up to the tool here, but this part is uh, it's in there now. So I'm going to use this to give me like a good spot to uh to tack this guide tube up to and then once i do that i'll be able to go over to the other side and figure out where i need to put the uh the guide rod on the other side so let me tack it up real quick let's see what we got going here take this off do we have a thing that does stuff? Oh yeah, guys. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. What do you think? Huh? That's pretty cool. All right, we gotta get the other side together. Obviously going to need some longer bolts, but for now this is going to work. Heck yeah. Now I need to come up with some some like thumb screws or something to stop it. But I mean it clears everything. Look, it clears under here. So that's good. It clears right in here. Comes up to the tool. So if you're like running a piece of sheet metal through it, you're like that's it. So there is a little binding in here. These aren't perfectly straight. One thing I can do is I can take these off and turn them down a little bit more. But I mean, actually it's kind of nice because when you push it all the way back, it kind of stays there. So I don't know. We'll just call that a feature. When you screw something up and it, it's a feature. Okay guys, I did a little work off camera. You'll have to forgive me. I just get caught up sometimes and I don't think about recording so much. But uh, I think I got something here. Check this out. So I mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, uh, that my grandpa taught me that trick with the tap and, uh, you know, it was good enough for him and he put stuff into, uh, orbit and on the moon and stuff. Uh, you know, he, he was a tool and die maker for Aerojet back in the day. They did the challenger. Don't judge him, but did a lot of that sort of thing. One of the things he also told me is if you can't make it accurate, 
make it adjustable. <laughs> so because I was fighting with getting the level of the fence just underneath the die or just right on top of the die, I figured it's one of those things you probably just chase and chase and chase. Better just to make it adjustable. I did that by taking the front holes in this bracket and just opening them up. I stepped them up to like three eighths or uh, you know, whatever that unibit, the, <laughs> the top on that unibit is. And now what I can do is I can tighten the back, leave the front a little snug, and then tap my fence up and down kind of into place. And then uh, for locking it down, these are just five sixteenths um, coarse nuts. And I'll probably do like a, I don't know, I'll weld like a, a little piece of V, bent V material so I can just swing them on and off and then I get them hand tight. Or, I mean, you just keep a wrench around because everything else is 9 16 on this. So I figured uh, that could be 9 16 too. And that works out pretty good. Just loosen them up and then, oh, you don't need the fence? That's fine. Just go ahead and push it back out of the way. Or you want to adjust it some other way. So there is a little bit of binding in the fence. Here, let me see. Um, when you get it towards the back. And I think I'm going to take care of that by um, I think I'm gonna take care of that by reducing that shaft size here I'll probably take these off and spin a couple thousandths off of them until this whole thing goes in and out added a little lubrication to it oh my gosh the kids are going nuts <laughs> added a little lube to it and uh, boy that's the ticket as well it uh, it runs pretty good it slides pretty good so uh, anyways this is uh, pretty, pretty good. But th this fit up here is what is important and it seems to work pretty good for me. So I'm really, really happy with that. The next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna make some thumb wheels for this. Actually, no, even before that, what I've decided is since I couldn't get these perfectly straight and there's a little bit of tweak on it, what I'm gonna do is I really don't need this whole section because I think it's binding up back here. So I'm gonna take these off and cut them because like all I need is this part up here. So I'm gonna take those off and cut them and then I'm gonna come up with some kind of a, I'll probably cut this. I thought I had some 5 16s all thread, but I don't. So I'm gonna cut the head off this bolt and then maybe spin up on, a, on the lathe, um, see if I can find some aluminum and then spin up some 5 16 like knobs or something or some knobs with 5 16 thread in it for, uh, for the handles on this. So I can just, all right, I got these cut up. Um, it should be a lot easier now because there's a whole lot less um, material for these to slide through. And any kind of small misalignments should be taken up in that amount of space. So I'm hoping that that works better. That's backwards, but you get it. All right, we're going to go cut the heads of these bolts off and see if we can't make some kind of piece for this. Okay, I think I overcomplicated the uh, attachment or the set screw deal for this. Um, the rest of the machine has set screws, so I just dug in the box and I found two 5 16 18 set screws. And uh, I mean, you've already got the tool out because you're adjusting the rest of the tool. So, I mean, I'll just go ahead and save myself hours worth of work and we're just going to run set screws. Well, it cleared most of the binding up. There's still a little bit in there, but I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's plenty for me. That's <laughs> that works great. Give it a little. There we go. All right, let's set just some random depth on here. Give these a a little tightening it seems to be okay that looks good just give it an unk on all these guys this is good it doesn't look like the fence gets in the way of anything so that is actually pretty important
Oops, wrong way. Ah! That's good, that's good. All right, so we've got it set up now to where um, the fence is like at a random depth. See, I'll bring it in a little bit tighter here. The fence is kind of just at some arbitrary depth. And I'm gonna run a piece through that. If you guys are not in the way. And we'll see what we can get out of it. See what it looks like. All right guys, well the proof is kinda in the pudding on that. I think the profiling tool is proven to be a pretty uh, versatile little tool and making a fence for it is uh, icing on the cake. Let me just start bringing in, give you a, a closer up deal view of it here. So I picked up those two back bolts there and you saw me build these and you saw me build this whole thing and it's very adjustable. Again, I decided to just stick with 5 16 hardware on it because everything is 5 16 on this. So with that, kind of one tool to do everything. And then, you know, you're infinitely adjustable here. Now, the only thing I didn't get to do, which I kind of wanted to do, but the video is running long and I, I want to get it out so you guys can, can check this out, is I wanted to come up with something for running curved panels. And my idea was this. I was going to build a whole other fence system that picks up right here and right here just like this. But inside of here so like right in here and then right here on either side i was going to have uh, two sealed ball bearings and having them two offset like that would give you um like a basically a channel to run a curved panel through and then my idea for adjustability was to uh, run holes every like i don't know however wide the hole is quarter inch or whatever every you know half inch so they're spaced evenly and then you can adjust the the width of where those bearings need to be and what i may end up doing is just doing that on this piece because if this had holes in the bottom of it that would be fine right so 
I may just do that. Pop holes in here and then bearings. It's it's going way overboard. You could, I saw Carl had a piece of like round stock welded to the bottom of one of these, I think. is It, it would do the same thing, but with two points of contact, you can kind of push against. With one point of contact, it would kind of rotate around that one point, but if you had those two points, the the furthest point of the the peak in the panel or the roundness in the panel, that doesn't make sense. But you know what I'm saying? If you have like something round, like say that's a, the shape of your panel and you had one, two points of contact, it would roll kind of in there. I hope that makes sense. So that's my idea for that. I'm gonna do that, but uh, a fence on this thing makes it uh, pretty great. So uh, maybe copy the idea, improve on it. If you've got ideas that I could use to improve this, please let me know. I'm definitely down to hear it. Uh, I'm just kind of fumbling my way through this. I wanted to be able to have a fence on here so I could do longer panels solo. But yeah, the only, only one failure I have had on this is right in here in this area, it started to crack. Let's not talk too much about my welds because I'm not a welder, I'm just a guy with a welder. But it started to crack in here and uh, I, I hit Carl up and I was like, what do I need to do? And he's like, grind that out, uh, v groove it and then put some like hot weld in there. I kind of had just a kind of like a sheet metal weld on there, like like 80, 90 amps. But I burned this one in. It's like 150 amps and it was hot. So anyways, guys, we got it finished up. There's the fence for the Japan's Customs uh, profiling tool. It works great. If you've got any input or like things I could do different or to make it better, uh, drop it down there in the comments. I would love to hear it. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. So, but this is the internet. Nobody cares about that sort of thing anyways. All right guys, thanks so much for coming around. We'll see you real soon on the next one.